The narrative unfolds at a lively party, where we are introduced to Cole, a determined man on a quest to locate his brother. In his search, Cole stumbles upon his brother, trapped in a room, shirtless and speaking incoherently. Without hesitation, Cole bursts into the room, grabs his brother Docket, reprimanding the onlookers who are busy recording the bizarre situation on their phones. He implores them to cease their actions before his brother's distress escalates into something catastrophic. Alarming everyone, Ducket takes a dangerous turn, he stabs his brother Cole with a knife. Then he rushes outside and inflicts a shocking injury on himself, horrifying the party's attendees. On another note, we follow the story of Mia, a 17-year-old girl who is grappling with the two-year anniversary of her mother Rhea's passing. Mia believes her mother's death was a tragic accident, possibly due to an overdose. She lives with her father Max, but doesn't communicate with him much following this painful incident. Instead, Mia seeks solace in the company of her best friend Jay, Jade's younger brother Riley and their caring mother Sue. One evening as Mia was driving Riley home from his friend's place, they stumbled upon a heartbreaking sight. A kangaroo, injured and moaning in pain after being hit by a vehicle. Compassionate Riley suggested ending its suffering, but Mia hesitated, unable to carry out the difficult task. Instead they drove cautiously around the wounded creature, their hearts heavy with empathy. On a different night, Mia was persuaded by her lively friend Jade to attend a party, mainly because Jade's boyfriend, Daniel, would be there. Sneaking out, they joined the gathering hosted by Joss and Haley. The highlight of the night was a peculiar game involving an embalmed hand inscribed with mystical markings, believed to summon spirits. Brave yet apprehensive, Mia volunteered to be the first to participate. With a single candle casting flickering shadows in the dim room, Haley served as Mia's spectral guide. Talk to me, Mia whispered, her hand clutching the eerie artifact. In the hushed stillness, her eyes widened as she gazed upon the ghostly figure of an elderly man. Gradually her initial fear transformed into a sense of curiosity, empowering her to silently echo the phrase once more. This time with added conviction she whispered, I let you in. In a surreal moment, Mia encountered the spectral presence of a ghastly-looking woman. Time seemed to stretch as Mia, seemingly possessed, held on longer, her voice shifting into an eerie, threatening tone as she addressed Riley. The room was filled with a palpable tension until the hand was finally wrested from her grip, leaving everyone present in awe and bewilderment. Next evening at Jade's house and with Sue away for the night, the group decided to play the eerie game once more. Despite Jade's hesitations and the others deeming Riley too young, he insisted on participating. Cautiously, they set a brief time limit, hoping to minimize any potential risks. As the seconds ticked away, the room filled with an uncanny presence. Riley, usually so full of life, became a vessel for something otherworldly. A voice, resembling that of Mia's late mother Rhea, and when the allotted minutes drew to a close, Mia, desperate for more time with the spirit she believed to be her mother, hesitated to let go. In a shocking turn of events, Riley's demeanor changed drastically. He began smashing his head against the table with terrifying force, narrowly avoiding a life-threatening injury. Just in the nick of time, Jade intervened, preventing Riley from inflicting irreparable harm. They swiftly rushed him to the hospital, the incident leaving the group shaken and questioning the supernatural forces they had unwittingly unleashed. Desperate for answers and tormented by guilt, Mia attempted to visit Riley at the hospital, seeking solace and understanding. To her dismay both Jade and Sue turned her away, blaming her for Riley's terrible ordeal. Feeling ostracized, Mia found herself drawn to Daniel, her longtime crush, seeking comfort in his presence. One night, in a bizarre and horrifying dream, Mia witnessed a spectral old woman seemingly feeding off Daniel's foot. In a shocking twist, she woke up to the realization that she was the one engaged in this unsettling act, much to Daniel's horror. Driven by a newfound determination, Mia decided to confront the supernatural forces haunting her life. 
Taking matters into her own hands, she seized the mysterious artifact and prepared herself to communicate with her mother's spirit. In the flickering candlelight, she beseeched her mother for answers. Rhea's voice, reassuring and tender, confirmed her death as accidental, emphasizing her enduring love for her daughter. Rhea expressed concern for Riley, indicating that he was in pain and desperately needed help. Meanwhile, Jade persisted in her efforts to assist Riley at the hospital. However, he remained under the sinister influence, lashing out and biting Jade before succumbing to a frenzied episode. In a terrifying turn of events, he slammed his head against the wall, prompting medical intervention as doctors struggled to subdue him. Determined to put an end to the supernatural torment afflicting Riley, Mia rallied a group consisting of Daniel, Haley, and Joss. Together they embarked on a quest to find Cole, the key to this enigmatic puzzle. Cole, burdened with guilt, revealed a grim truth. The spirits weakening Riley could only be expelled by waiting, a test of patience in the face of supernatural malevolence. Refusing to succumb to despair, Mia devised a daring plan. Convinced they hadn't properly concluded the ghostly game, she teamed up with Jade and returned to the hospital. Their goal was to rekindle the connection with the spirits, hoping to find a way to rescue Riley. Despite their efforts, their attempts failed, leaving them in a state of despair. However, Mia's determination led her back into the fray. Alone, she delved back into the mysterious realm and encountered the spirit of a young girl. This spectral presence revealed a chilling truth. Riley was not only haunted by one spirit, but tormented by a multitude of malevolent entities. The gravity of the situation intensified, propelling Mia further into the heart of the supernatural, where a daunting battle against the forces of darkness awaited. In the midst of her anguish and confusion, Mia's world shattered when Max, her father, approached her with a heart-wrenching revelation. He confessed the painful truth about Rhea's death, revealing a devastating suicide note that shattered Mia's belief in her mother's accidental demise. As tears streamed down her face, Mia was confronted by the apparition of Rhea's spirit, claiming that Max's version of events was a lie, further plunging her into a maelstrom of doubt and despair. In her room, Mia, tormented by the sinister forces, found herself face to face with the specter of her father, or so she thought. Desperate and terrified, she attempted to defend herself, grabbing scissors to ward off the malevolent presence. In a horrifying twist of fate, her fear-fueled actions led to a tragic accident. In her attempt to protect herself, she inadvertently stabbed her father in the neck, a horrifying turn of events that left them both in a state of shock and horror. The room filled with a palpable tension, a testament to the overwhelming darkness that had consumed their lives, leaving them on the precipice of an unthinkable tragedy. In a desperate attempt to free Riley from the clutches of malevolent spirits, Mia resorted to a drastic plan. She lured Jade away from the hospital, creating a momentary diversion, while she returned to talk to Sue, seeking answers and perhaps closure. Sue absolved Mia of any blame for Riley's plight, granting her the opportunity to confront her brother one last time. Haunted by the grim reality of the situation, Mia found herself at a crossroads. Armed with scissors, she stood on the precipice of an unthinkable act, but faltered, unable to follow through with the horrific deed. Instead, she wheeled Riley out of the hospital, seeing him not as Jade's brother, but as a frail, ghostly figure, a shell of his former self, consumed by the malevolent spirits. Rhea's spirit, a spectral presence torn between love and malevolence, urged Mia to push Riley into traffic a chilling choice that could end his suffering. At that pivotal moment, Jade arrived, witnessing the horrifying scene unfolding before her. Mia, torn between saving Riley and succumbing to the darkness, let go, allowing the wheelchair to move perilously close to the speeding traffic. In an unexpected and heart-wrenching turn, Jade, overwhelmed by a surge of emotions and desperation, took a drastic action. She pushed Mia directly into the path of an oncoming car, sacrificing her friend to ensure Riley's safety. The screeching tires and the deafening impact marked the harrowing and tragic finale 
to their nightmarish ordeal. In a surreal twist of fate, Mia awoke, unaware of her own demise. She found herself in the hospital once more, observing a heartwarming scene. Riley, now fully recovered, was leaving with Jade and Sue, a glimmer of hope in their eyes. Eager to follow, Mia attempted to reach out to them, but her voice fell on deaf ears, her presence fading as the lights in the hospital flickered and dimmed. In the enveloping darkness, Mia's senses heightened. A faint glimmer of light beckoned her, leading her toward an outstretched hand. Without hesitation, she grasped it, only to find herself in a completely different reality. Before her stood a man in a distant land, engaged in the very same supernatural game that had consumed her life. As she faced the unknown, the boundaries between life and death blurred, leaving her trapped in a perpetual cycle of the supernatural, she found herself playing the haunting talk to me game, forever as a part of its eerie realm. I really hope you enjoyed the recap of the movie, Talk To Me. If you found recap entertaining, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing for more content.